Good evening everyone. Hello and welcome to the world premiere of the very first Color Pro Film Festival. I'm Sam and I'll be your host today. This year's theme, Shine Brightly, encourages people to share a story of a breakthrough event in their lives within the sub-themes of Take a Leap of Faith, Shattering Expectations and What is Perfection. These three sub-themes were created by our Color Pro partners Jess K, Mike Vigils, and Sam Newton. Over the course of the competition, we've received over 180 submissions from creators around the world. We've asked our creators to select their favorite submissions and edit them together into a film. And today, finally, we're gonna see what they've created from all of the amazing work submitted by you guys. Now, before we watch their films, let's check out their process and take a peek behind the scenes to see how Just K, Mike Vigils and Sam Newton went about selecting and editing submissions from all of you to transform them into singular pieces of work. All done on our VP2776s of course. Hey what's up guys, so welcome to a new video and I thought it was about time to drop another tutorial on the channel and of course the most asked topic was color grading. So let's jump right in and let me show you how I color grade my videos.
So over the last couple of months, as some of you might have noticed, my color grading has changed quite a bit, which would be I got a new monitor, which is the VP2776 from ViewSonic. This is a great monitor and it's 100% color accurate, meaning that if you edit on this, it will look exactly the same on phones like iPhone and Samsung as those are 100% accurate as well. Before I used my laptop screen and I had to play around a lot before I got the colors right. So when I would transfer from my laptop to the phone, it would just look different and then getting it right was just such a long process. Besides that, the VP2776 has flawless color reproduction with Delta E2 color accuracy, meaning it's nearly indistinguishable by the naked eye, resulting in a very precise look for your videos. So I think that was very important over the last couple of months and it helped me so much achieving better colors. Apart from that, having a second monitor also makes you more focused because it's bigger and it's higher up so you're looking up all the time. This way you don't have to be as close to the screen so you get less tired and you're also looking up a lot which makes more light enter your eyes and that's why you're less tired as well. Another thing that I started to do was make my own LUTs that I could load onto my camera specifically. So I made this LUT specifically for my camera which is the Blackmagic 6K. And what you do then is load them onto a card and use this to import them onto your camera. You're then ready to expose correctly in the field. So I'm just going to quickly demonstrate how the LUT is on the camera. And I'll show you that this is exactly the same LUT as I apply later on post. I'm just going to get a shot here for Gaston. Right, so now as you can see in the playback, the LUT is on. Here I can turn it off. And then when I turn it on again, it looks exactly the same as when the load supplied on post. So what's really nice about this is you know already how to expose before you start editing. So once you have all the files on your computer, you can just apply the same LUT but in post and it will look exactly the way it looked on camera and from there you make some minor adjustments and you're good to go. I really enjoy this process because it's very accurate and editing the colors is now a very fast process so I don't have to waste too much time on it and I'm even very happy with the results. So I would highly recommend you doing this method as well. You can do this with an external monitor on other cameras so that's no problem at all. Alright so now that we're in DaVinci Resolve let me explain my color grading process. So to create these LUTs I've created my own creative LUT and my Rec 709 as well. However there's really good Rec 709s that you can find in DaVinci Resolve as well so I would recommend using those if you want to. And then from there I started color grading clips and applying these to different clips in the timeline and then I went back and forth between them to make sure that in the end they work perfectly and with that I created five clips myself that I now have applied on my camera and that I use every single time and this makes sure that my editing process is much faster however in this video I'll first show you how I would edit from scratch then I will show you how I would create these LUTs and then I'll also show you how I edit with the LUTs myself so when I was editing in DaVinci from scratch this is what I would do so let's start with this image here and grade it. So first I would make two nodes with Alt S and drag them to the end. And then on the first one I would apply the effect called Color Space Transform. I would then go to the input gamma and put it on Blackmagic Design Film Generation 5. And for the output gamma I would use Cineon Film Log for example. You can use other output gammas as well. However I remember that this is what I used for mine. I then went to the last tab which is where I apply the creative LUT. This is the LUT that I made for my footage as a starting point. So let's apply that now too. Obviously this is not the final LUT that you want to be using, but these are necessary first creative adjustments that I also made after some time. I would then go to the first note and change all the primary settings. If the white balance is off I would change this here too, but in this image it looks fine so let's start with the curve to get a contrast that we like. For this I make a slight S curve normally to add punch to the image which is something that I like on my videos. As you can see that already looks better and adds a lot of life to it. By the way, you can also name all the nodes for clarity. Let's name this one color space, this one LUT, and let's name this one primaries. And now let's create a new node for the saturation. 
Let's go to the wheels and turn up the saturation of all three colors, red, green and blue, so the RGB colors. And then if we go here we can change the intensity of the entire note. Now let's call this note saturation 1. I'll then create another note and slightly change the saturation again, but this time only for certain colors. On this image I feel like the red is very saturated. To achieve this we go to the U versus saturation line where we can change certain hues. And lately I've been really liking it if images are more desaturated but still rich of color. In my opinion this is all about using ND filters and good color grading. Right there looks good and now let's create an even more punch with the curves by going down on the blacks and up on the highlights. Now this image is starting to look really good already. Another thing we can do is create another node to add an effect called glow. This is depending on the shot and for this one I feel like it's not too necessary but let's do it anyway. So let's play with the threshold and add color. We can then change the composite type to soft light and blend it to finish off this image. With the glow you can also have the threshold all the way to the left which I do sometimes and this will make sure it only applies to the highlights. But that's it for this image and I think it turned out pretty well. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these adjustments, apply it to another clip in the timeline and see how it works out, change a couple of things, go back and then we go in between. So let's continue. So now let's edit another one. What I would do now is copy all the adjustment notes and paste it on the next image. This one for example. As you can see it works but it's not perfect yet. It's too yellow, so let's go to the curves and play around with the U versus U to achieve a natural and deep green for this take. This is where you can target certain colors as I showed you before. Let's try changing the greens by making a point and do the same with the yellow area. And I think this is starting to look good. It's a little bit too saturated still, so let's desaturate it a little bit. Let's now copy and paste it again and go to the next one. As you can see, it's not perfect again. So we'll have to try and adjust some things. It's too saturated, so let's add some color. By the way, I prefer having a more saturated LUT in the end, because it's always better having the option to lower the intensity of the color than the other way around. On this image, I would definitely take a little bit more time and go in between it and the previous one, but it's definitely looking great already. Now let me show you how it compares to my LUT already by removing the adjustments and applying my LUT. And now that this one is done, let's copy these adjustments and apply it to the next one. Remember that we shot this on Gaston, his camera, with his LUT, so I'm sure it's just exposed differently, and maybe the white balance is off. So let's start with the curves. So let's add some contrast. And now as you can see, let's definitely make this image colder by changing the white balance in RAW. I think some previous changes are affecting this clip a bit wrong, so let's go to those notes. And that's starting to look a lot better. Now let's change the use a bit. So this is making a big difference already. And now let's desaturate the blues and greens. I'm liking the look of it now. However, we might have to make the white balance a bit warmer again after these changes. Around there is looking really good. Now let's take down the red. As Donika, her hair, points and face are quite saturated and are standing out too much. Now let's adjust the blue tint and make it slightly teal. Here you can clearly see a big difference. I don't want it to be too teal, but it was looking too magenta. So let's go somewhere in between. This looks good and lastly maybe we can change the green a little bit. So you could say that this image is edited from scratch, as we edited this from the adjustments from another one that we did edit from scratch. So basically we started from zero, however we changed a couple of things in between and it's starting to look a little bit better. So we've now already cleared all the notes and let's see how the LUTs apply to this one. We can actually now also see if it was actually underexposed and too warm. I think it is, so let's make some changes on the curves. So let's add some exposure. The color temperature probably should have been a bit more like this if my LUT was on the camera. So let's turn that down. Now let's continue playing with the curves to make the contrast look good. And that's looking really nice. Something like this would be a great starting point. The only thing that would be left is to apply some vignetting with the circular mask. And I would also desaturate the blue a bit. But apart from that, I think this image turned out great. So now let's edit one last one with my LUT. For this, let's start with applying the LUT to multiple images so we can choose. 
As you can see, after a lot of trial and error, it's definitely possible to create a LUT that works for all clips. It just takes a lot of time, but during the process you really train your eye as well. For the first grade, let's choose this clip. That's looking really nice, but I would make some small changes. Adding a filter to the bottom of this image will really drag the audience their attention to Gaston. We gotta play with the softness of the edge and add darkness for vignetting. After making it darker, we can also add some light to highlight those lit up grain points to create some contrast. I think this looks really nice and here you can see the adjustment. Lastly, I would probably add some glow to the highlights and a tiny bit to the shadows, but I think that's all for this clip. Now for this one, we add the LUT and see what's up. The highlights are quite strong as this isn't the most normal lighting situation, but as you can see, when we take off the LUT, all details are still there. Therefore, we create a node with Shift S to get some of that highlight detail back. That's looking really nice. Now I wouldn't do much more to the image, but to this one we're also gonna apply some glow. I think we can add some punch to the image by taking some of the highlight back. So this is the before and here's the after. So that's it for the editing. I hope you took something away from me showing you my process. And lastly now I'll quickly show you how you can export the LUTs in DaVinci yourself. All you have to do to create a LUT is make some adjustments, go to the right click, generate LUT, you choose the 33 point cube for Premiere or other programs, and you can use the 65 point cube for DaVinci Resolve. And that's it, you just save it somewhere and you're done. If you want to know how to load the LUTs into DaVinci and Premiere, you can check out the tutorial I've made on my website. There's also many more tutorials for you if you like. You can visit this through the link in my description. Also, if you're interested in chatting with like-minded filmmaker or even meeting up with them, you can check out my new platform called Filmspace. It's a community platform on my website, especially made for filmmakers, and it's completely free. So feel free to sign up through the link in my description. And lastly, if you want access to my black magic LUTs, they're also available on my website. But now I'll leave you with some speed grades to finish this video. Hey there, so my favorite thing about YouTube is hands down two things. It's a two part thing here. Making things and building a community of people who make things. And that's what we do here on the Stay Creamy Sam Newton channel. And that's what we did over the last two months. We ran a film competition in collaboration with ViewSonic and Color Pro. We being me, Mike Visuals and Just Kai. And we had nearly 200 submissions to this film competition. And this video right here that you were watching is gonna be me showing you some of my favorite submissions that were to my category, which is Shattering Expectations. And I will announce the winner of the entire thing for my category. And the winner gets to walk away with this bad boy, which is, I'll show in a second, the ViewSonic VP2776, which is one of the best color grading monitors on the market right now. And we're gonna talk about it later. But in the meantime, let's have some fun. Let's watch a few films here. The first honorable mention here is Road by David E. Papa. Right off the bat, accent just makes it so much more cinematic. I love it. Mi consenta di avere successo nella vita. E poi mi chiedo, perché per il successo? È davvero l'unica strada per essere felici. Credo esista un modello di felicità creato dai continui impulsi che riceviamo ogni giorno. Siamo convinti che rincorrere posizioni sociali sempre più altolocate ci possa far guadagnare quella grazia, quel rispetto e soprattutto una felicità, a mio avviso, fino a se stessa. Ogni giorno ricerchiamo azioni, momenti che ci facciano essere felici. Non sto dicendo che non ho ambizioni. Forse le ho ben più grandi delle mie possibilità. Non ho ancora trovato la strada che mi consentirà di sentirmi in pace con me stesso. Ma sono convinto di dover inseguire ciò che mi fa stare bene. Un ambiente, un amico, 
un amore. Sono stanco delle ansie, delle forti pressioni a cui il mondo mi sottopone ogni giorno. Lo so, sono continuo a rimandare, la mia vita lo è, ed io non ne sono soddisfatto. Ma è come se sentissi dentro di me che non è ancora il momento. Wow, wow, that whole thing just, the energy and the pacing and the color especially was phenomenal and I just watched it probably a hundred times, definitely worth a rewatch. I'm going to link all these videos down below if you want to watch them. Um, if they are live on the internet, you'll get to watch them. So uh, the next one here is completely different. This is by Jacob Ferrofino. It is Ferrofino and this is by Jacob Ferrofino and it is the most insanely edited film hands down in the entire competition and uh we're gonna dive into it something i feel like the world today has lost over time we are controlled by our phones and social media we are divided more than ever as a world we are insecure and unbelieving in ourselves to do amazing things. the amount of effort he put into this we are in a sense broken Watch but this. in all the darkness, there is a shining light. What? Because we have you. It's a full animation! And you may not realize it, but you have the innate power to imagine. Or rather, to reimagine. To reimagine the world. To reimagine hate and to love. To reimagine the expectations we have for ourselves. Because you are more. And you more than anyone deserve to shine bright. The theme was Shine Brightly, so for him to make, like, the overall theme was Shine Brightly. So he made a Shattering Expectations video about Shining Brightly. That was crazy. That shot also? Holy shit. Holy shot. Oh, what? Wild. Wild, wild, wild. So obviously, editing through the roof, some of the footage was mind-blowing. Um, and hands down, what I really like is effort. He put so much time and energy into this video, which I really love. So Jacob, as always, you are a legend, and you crushed it. Now, we're just going to dive straight into the winner of the entire thing. And this was one of the most powerful films I've watched in a very, very, very long time, and... It's one that I had to watch and then rewatch and then rewatch and then rewatch like a hundred times just because it's going to speak for itself. But man, the whole thing was so powerful. And then the, the small just metaphors that were sprinkled throughout the whole thing that lined up with the visuals and the storyline. It was phenomenal. Now, this is the winner of Shattering Expectations. And the winner is Habib Kolawale. A Life of Limitations is the name of his film. Watch this. This is... Fuck. I'm going to try to shut up for this one so you can just watch it all the way through. This is the lowest possible quality and I've been trying to export this for days. I'm so fucking tired. Where I live, the land where dreams are called dreams at a very young age. Getting to follow the paved road is the way. If you don't meet the standards, you are treated as a failure. I spent my life looking at the side of the road, wondering what it's like to tread the other path. A little over a month ago, I decided to get a taste of the death road. I entered a short film competition and when the result was announced, I was fifth. It's motivated me to turn the darkest moments of my life into a story. I worked really hard for weeks to make it into a short film and when it was ready, I couldn't export. I tried exporting for days but my laptop couldn't. I never met the deadline. Dear diary, I went back to the paved road these days ago, but I got out yesterday. I couldn't go back to being dead after feeling what it's like to be alive. My breakthrough isn't something flamboyant. It's the realization that everything that grows, grows not on a paved gravel road, but in the dirt. And no matter how impossible the limitations feel, I have to overcome them if I'm going to bloom in this dirt. I'm ready to defy what everyone thinks of me. I'm ready to thrive. I'm ready to grow. I'm ready to overcome my life of limitations. So a big, big congratulations to Habib. Go show him some love. Um, that film was just mind-blowing. And hopefully this can get a little bit of uh, momentum onto his channel and maybe we can figure something out and get some momentum for him to be able to put an upgrade into his laptop situation to go with his new monitor here um, because I know 
the export situation wasn't amazing, but he was able to get this film out and it was phenomenal. So well done, Habib. This was the perfect example of why you don't need the greatest gear in the world, but he made it happen with intention and framing and pacing of the whole film and how beautifully laid out the whole thing was. So man, well done. So to wrap it all up, we're going to walk through the cinematic edit that I made, which was titled The World Needs You, which is a collection of some of my favorite shots from the short films that were submitted to this competition. It was so powerful to take all of this footage and combine it into a Sam Newton style travel film. So I'm going to walk you through this film that I made and hopefully you can walk away with some kind of tips that I like to use. And uh, it's not going to be a very technical tutorial. It's more so going to be kind of just getting an insight on how I like to pace my videos and getting an understanding of that. So I started off with this kind of, uh, hopefully you've already seen it by now. So I created this little intro just to kind of get your attention, making it uh, exciting. And then I went into the film. So there's this poem called Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night or Don't Go Gentle Into That Good Night, a poem that I've heard a couple times on uh, uh, YouTube. And it's something that really sparked like creativity within me when I heard it. So I really, really wanted to make a film with it. I know it's kind of cliche using a old British man um, doing a voiceover, but sue me. Um, so I found this one. I thought it was really cool. And I decided and I decided to kind of loop it into the concept here. So starting off with a lot of shots that are kind of mysterious, where it's people backs to you, looking away, kind of building intrigue, you know? And then, you know, comes into Rage Against the Dying of the Light. Again, the text there is just directional blur, super easy, gives it a little bit of character. Then right as the beat drops, I put in my signature, a film by Sam Newton. This is something that's really cool for a lot of filmmakers out there. Take some time. Try to build out your own, like, a film by or a ABC vision or something like that. Your own intro that you can put in all of your films. For me, I really, really love it because it helps kind of, it's my stamp. It helps identify that this is my film, um, obviously, because of what it says. But also, it's just kind of my, like, little, my little sauce. My little, mm, my little sauce that I like to put on it. And I really think it helps kind of bring this really cinematic filmic style to my brand. And I really, really like it. And I think it's something that a lot of you might enjoy. So take some time and try to make a little graphic for yourself. Shot by you. 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 I also really love... You might have noticed in a lot of my films, I love doing these kind of intros where it shouts out who shot it or who it's sponsored by, a film by Sam Newton. For me, it just makes it seem like it's an intro to a real movie, which then kind of makes it feel a little more cinematic. Or doing outros where it's like directed by, shot by at the end of the video. I really, really, really like that because it kind of just makes it more cinematic-y. Cinematic-y. <laughs> also, as we go through here, just look at my timeline real quick. Everyone talks about the cool timelines and how they're stacked up really cool and it looks awesome. I love when my timelines are just clean and simple and it's shot next to shot next to shot and there's no flashy effects. I don't know. That's a very successful video to me and I really, really, really like it. So I'm happy about this one. But this is where my voiceover kind of comes in here. Also notice when I do my voiceovers, it's rhythmic. It's almost like it's a part of the song. I don't just record the voiceover and then lay it over the song. I listen to the song and match the voiceover to like fit the the same energy points of the song so it really flows really well. And although the world can be dark, it still needs you. The canvas mm. is blank. Love this shot right here, right as the beat Waiting drops. For your brush. So like right there, just little symbolism things that you can do and try to be intentional. I say the canvas is blank, waiting for your brush, right as people pick up the camera. Obviously, when I'm talking about brushes in this video, I'm talking about, you know, your camera is your tool. Use what you can to make what you can. Hopefully you got that. And then it literally goes to someone lighting a fire. And rage. Which these shots are insane. Rage against the dying. Notice how just simple things right there, right on the drop, you know, the fire is going left to right. The shot goes left to right. Easy, easy motion like that. 
just makes everything a lot it makes it just makes everything a lot more intentional which i really like so obviously this one was harder because i didn't have all the raw clips and i just had to kind of work with what i had in terms of what was already cut together but as the music picks up so does the the footage it gets faster it gets more dynamic dynamic that's a good word cool word <laughs> And yeah, so I would just say feel the song out while you're you're making these edits. Just I always like to figure out like what are the parts of the song that are slow, what are the parts of the song that are fast, and voiceovers for me are a very very powerful way to take your video up a notch and really have a connection with your audience. And so to pace your voiceovers in your edits in a very very intentional way so that when it's slow the voiceovers are a little bit slow and calm and when it picks up your voice picks up and they can feel the inflection in your voice and that kind of stuff is very simple and very easy to do and really makes for a very powerful connection with your audience so and then right here just something simple like notice how right at the beginning i had everybody facing away from the camera kind of building intrigue and towards the end here looking right at the camera looking right at the camera looking right at the camera now we've almost like made a connection with these characters at the end of the film so they're kind of you know building that connection again with eye contact and then she turns away right as the song ends kind of giving this really nice satisfying ending to the film which is bless me now Ooh. with your fears tears i pray pull out drone shot and then it comes full circle back into that initial voiceover Ray. Calmer shots to match the calmer ending, slowing it down, and then going into our winner, which was Habib. Again, incredible. Shine brightly, the theme. I don't know, this was really simple. A little walkthrough of my film. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please go check out Habib's video. It was amazing. It's well worth watching a few times over and just analyzing the intention of his shots and his story and how he told it and how he used his disadvantages and made them into an advantage for his film, which was really powerful and really uh, inspiring. So hopefully you got something out of this. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. And um, that's about it. This monitor, an insanely good monitor. Right now I'm watching everything on the VP2776. Obviously for this, I couldn't color grade, but color grading on this has been an absolute delight. It is one of the nicest monitors on the market right now for color grading and for the price point. It is really, really solid and uh, it just looks really, really good and ViewSonic really knocked it out of the park. So if you're interested in getting the VP2776, I'll leave a link in the description. Go check it out and uh, I appreciate you guys hanging out with us today. And if you're here on the live stream, that's awesome. Okay. <laughs> Peace and love. Thank you guys. And as always, stay creamy. What's up guys, how's it going? My Visuals here and welcome to the breakdown of my ViewSonic Color Pro video, What is Perfection? If you haven't checked that out yet, it would be an amazing time to do that right now. The video meant a lot to me. It had a lot of kind of personal, um, just kind of flashbacks, memories, even some childhood clips. Anyway, in this video, we're gonna be going through two things. At the start, we're gonna be going through kind of the tr tricks and tips of how I cr kind of created some of those scenes. The second part is gonna be a breakdown of just a color piece, a color grading piece of the video um, from the What Is Perfection video, like a snippet of the cinematic segment in there. And we're gonna be, be breaking it down and color grading it on the go, starting from fresh and just really going into the kind of core color grading um, kind of elements of Premiere Pro. So we're gonna be using the, obviously, my trusty ViewSonic monitor. And for those who wanna know, this is the ViewSonic VP2776 2K monitor. Uh, I've been using it for a couple of months now and I've been really enjoying the color accuracy on it, but we'll go into more detail on the importance of that later on. But in the meantime, let's get the video started. Let's roll the cinematics.
So intro piece, this whole sequence, I really wanted to have that dream look. So that glowy kind of ambience, the environment, I wanted it really bright and the actual room we're filming in, I really wanted it to be just super clean, super minimalistic. And honestly, I spent hours on Airbnb trying to find the location, but we pulled through and Jimmy and I went to this location in, uh, I think it was South Essex. So James is there were. James' back garden, you can call it. And I really wanted to achieve this kind of dream look. So I was thinking, right, I've got the location. Hopefully I'm gonna get the light coming through the windows to get that kind of dreamy kind of light ray look. But I, how am I gonna get these light rays? There's other ways to do it with smoke machines and just a load of other ways. But honestly, smoke machines, they stink. And also they're just so heavy to carry around. And logistics wise, they're not portable and they're just a hassle. Um, but I really wanted to get this dream look with the rays. So that brings on to my first kind of little trick about getting light rays and it's with this thing. It's the secret uh, cabinet. Cabinet? Secret box. So here is the little secret. It is the smoke genie. So what it is is, is literally, think of these massive smoke machines. It's all of that in this tiny thing. It's literally the size Besides my phone, which is crazy. So this is what we used to make the light rays. And honestly, I'll be traveling with this. I have been doing a couple of trips with this and it's a game changer. And this is the secret of how we got these light rays. So if I put it on right now quickly. Instant, I'm actually gonna fog up this rope now. <laughs> and instantly you get that kind of dream atmosphere. Hopefully this fire alarm doesn't go off. Um, but to be honest, I can just probably smoke out this room a bit. And it will actually allow us to kind of get these kind of glowy looks I wanted to get in the uh, final video. So you'll see in a minute as it settles. <laughs> this is by far the weirdest thing I've done on the YouTube channel. Okay, so we're gonna let that settle a bit, but you'll see in a minute, it will settle down, it will stay in the air and already you can see as the light hits this smoke, it just creates that dream look. And that was exactly what I was going for. So here's a couple behind the scenes of how we achieved those. Right on, dude. Right, we've got some hard light coming through this room and we're gonna try and capture it. So as you can see, James and I are messing about with the, the smoke genie. Honestly, it is really, once you start clicking it, you can't stop and you just want to literally use all of the fluid inside. But James was telling me off a bit about pumping it too much, but it is really cool. I would definitely recommend checking it out and um, getting those light rays was amazing. But we did have to just pray that the weather was going to pull through, which it did in the end at the very last minute. But a little trick, Smoke Genie, definitely check it out. It's um, just a good use of like light rays or anything like that. So yeah, put it on your wish list. All right, so the second thing I'm gonna be discussing is what kind of filter did I use to add to that dream look, add to that kind of overall, just that kind of flashback memory looking vibe I wanted to achieve for the film. And that brings us to one of these. No, it's not a polarizer. It's not a ND filter, it's actually a black pro mist filter. And I've been using these for a couple of years now and they're super underrated. Not that many people really know about a black pro mist. Black pro mists are really essential to get that kind of dreamy, less harsh look in your shots. I use it for every single camera now. Sometimes the cameras we use like Sony's or Canon's or a lot of these cameras, they do have quite a digital look. So to reduce that a bit, I use a black pro mist and it just softens the image. If you're shooting in harsh light, you can just use this to kind of dampen down that harshness and it really does come through in the final edit. 
and this combined it with the Smoke Genie in the intro was the perfect combination to get that kind of dream look I was going for. So here are some shots um, with the Black Promise and you can really see if you look in the highlights, it's really glowing in those highlights and that is because of the Black Promise. And also drone shots. Honestly, we joked about it on the trip, but say you're flying your drone next to the beach, you're gonna get that kind of misty sea spraying up at that drone and it will hit the camera lens. And honestly, you end up just getting an organic, homemade black pro mist on your drone. So as you can tell from these drone shots at the beach, you can get that misty look when the sun hits it. It just looks like a black pro mist, which is awesome. So I would highly recommend checking out a black pro mist filter because I use it for every single film. So those are the two kind of secret um, little things I used in my video, uh, what is perfection to kind of achieve that dream look. And overall, I'm really happy how it went. And big shout out to my mate James um, and Torn and Amy in uh, Cape Town as well, just for helping me achieve that video. I couldn't have done it without you guys, so thank you. So I've now showed you how I achieved that dream look. I'm now gonna hop over to the monitor to check out some of these raw shots and show you guys how I color graded it and just how I achieved that cinematic look. So let's hop over to Premiere Pro and just draw some selects and get color grading. We're going to be starting with this drone shot anyway, so we're going to be dragging it into Premiere Pro to start a new sequence. So I'm just going to quickly scrub for it. As you can tell, it's insane, the shot. James, kudos. So I'm going to be just trying to take it from about here. Actually, the camera kind of moves slightly there, so we're going to start here. Okay, so this is gonna be our color grading kind of image we're gonna be basing it off. I'm just gonna pull out slightly here, it helps me. Okay, so what I always do is I just go to immediately to the curve tool, just because it's so flat, um, I always just automatically go to the curves tool. And then also, for those who wanna know, we're shooting D log M on the uh, DJI Mavic 3 here. So we're gonna be attaching the DJI D-Log LUT, which is going to be automatically helping us just kind of bring the colors a lot more um, to what they actually were in real life. But again, we, because we're shooting D-Log, we can really bring that color um, and just customize it completely, which we're going to be doing. But as the base curves and the LUT is where I kind of go off from. And um, obviously you can do it without the LUT, but I just prefer to do that just because it just is much easier and my workflow is increased massively by that. So we're going to be using the curves tool right now. So I'm just going to be bringing in the shadows a bit more on these rocks here. And again, mentioning the uh, ViewSonic monitor, I know that this monitor is color accurate. I've calibrated it myself. And knowing that these shadows and these, these blacks and these highlights is literally true to what it is on the monitor. I can just be reassured when I export it, wherever it's gonna go for the final destination, I know that it's gonna be color accurate. And if it was to go on TV, like a big billboard, hopefully the color is gonna be true to what it really is. So it's just reassurance to be honest. And um, as we're crushing these blacks a bit more and the uh, highlights, bringing out the highlights in the sky, you can definitely just see the, the, the color on the uh, monitor really pop and um, Comparing it to monitors that I've used in the past, it really is um, a lot more accurate uh, than what I've been used to. Okay, so we're going to be bringing out these shadows a little bit more. We don't want to go all the way too up because uh, as you can see on myself here, it's just creating this horrible haze. So we're going to be bringing it down ever so slightly. And we're going to go to the creative tab, go and look, and we're going to just select that DJI Rec um, 709 D-Log M LUT. Okay, that, <laughs> that literally made it look purple, but we're gonna really dial it back. Like I said, we don't wanna use this LUT as the color grade. We wanna use it as a literally a 10% base just to kind of bring out that color then, just to bring out the color it really was. And um, we can just bring it out to around 10%. So we're gonna leave that at that. Obviously those who don't wanna do uh, the kind of LUT route, 
you, you can skip this part, but I'm just gonna be doing that. It's just a bit easier to uh, bring back the colors. But next up is the uh, basic correction tab. So I always just go through contrast, bring those kind of shadows back in. Highlights, I'm gonna be blurring it a bit because if we increase it too much, it's gonna be blowing out these skies way too much. And we're gonna be bringing the shadows down. And again, the blacks. It's looking very flat still. We're gonna, we're literally 10% there. So let's, uh, let's just continue this. So we're gonna be going down to the HS secondary tab. We're gonna be using this dropper tool and we're gonna be selecting the rocks. And we're gonna click this color gray area. And we're just gonna try our best to just select the uh, rocks. Nothing else, just the rocks. It might pick up my face a little bit, but if we can, we can use this minus one. And as you can tell, it's just deleted me a bit and we can bring out those rocks a little bit more. Like so. We're gonna be making these rocks glow a bit more. We're gonna make them a lot more orange and just have that light bounce off them a bit more. So we're gonna to go to the temperature tool on the HSL. And as you can tell, as I'm increasing it, it's just really bringing out all of the color in the shot. And you can just double check what you're kind of highlighting. And you don't want to be choosing too much of the sky, just the rocks. And a little bit of a pink tint will be great. We can use this to bring it down a bit, just to again, crush those blacks. We don't want it too high at all. Because it was quite late in Blue Hour we were shooting this. So we want it to be true to what it was. Okay, that's looking pretty good. If we zoom into my face right now, it's looking way too pale and it's there's no contrast or shadows uh, on my skin right now. So we're gonna go and fix that. So we're just gonna be playing around with each of the uh, tools here, just bringing it lower and lower. It's looking quite nice. The texture's really coming through on this rock. Right now, it's looking pretty good, but I really think the sky is struggling to keep up with the, uh, the rest of the color grade. So we're gonna go to the effect, effects control tab, com copy and paste this, and we're gonna just reset that so there's nothing on there. We're just gonna double check that. We're actually gonna use this mask tool. So we're gonna just highlight the sky, drag this all the way, I'm gonna put it around here. I'm gonna go to the start of our clip, drag it to where the horizon is, click this mask tool, just skip a bit, drag it down to the horizon again, and drag it down there and there. So as you can see throughout the whole thing, it's sticking to that horizon, and this is where we're gonna really change things up with the sky. So. We've now selected this color grade and immediately you can just increase the warmth a little bit. And again, curves tool. Just increasing it ever so slightly. And this, this tool is really good to actually give me some more contrast and shadows on my skin right now. There is this kind of harsh mask line coming through, but we'll sort that out in a second. Going back to the curves tool, we're gonna to select the red button here. And we're just gonna be playing around with the reds for a second. Okay, this, bug, this line's bugging me. Go to mask, feather, and it automatically just takes that away and it's really clean now. The whole shot, the whole purpose of this shot is to overdo it on the oranges and pinks and uh, reds. It's meant to be this amazing, colorful afterburn. 
at sunset. So that is what it's looking like right now. I love the reflections on the rock. I think right now the sky is still just, it doesn't have enough texture. So we're gonna go into the color grade again. Okay, we're gonna be clicking on to the curves tool, the blue one. I just wanna get a bit more orange in the scene. So we're just playing around with this right now. These are very like small micro adjustments. Again, we're just gonna quickly go over to the green tab. And again, we're just kind of making it a bit more pink and orange. Okay, going on to the main color, Lumetri color tab. We're just gonna play around with these now. So adding contrast again. Shadows, just playing around with these, really bringing out that detail in the sky now, which is looking good. You can see that harsh line still coming through, so if we just really do feather that out even more, it's gonna help a lot. Okay, it's looking pretty good. I think it is a bit overkill with the oranges right now. My body is really orange, so we need to figure that out. So what I'm gonna be doing is using another Lumetri color tool selecting it with the HSL secondary and just desaturating it a bit. So we're gonna do that once we've nested the clip, but let's just do these other adjustments and then get onto that. Okay, I'm, I'm liking what we're, we're seeing right now. So what we're gonna be doing is, my body is way too orange, so we're gonna be just nesting this clip by clicking three, and then I can just select another HSL secondary on here, just pinpointing myself and nice, it's picked up my, my body and my arms. We don't want to be selecting the rocks because we don't want to get rid of that saturation just yet. Which is good, it's picked up the, uh, it's basically saying my face is red. And we're going to be going down to the saturation tab and we're just going to be reducing that a bit. And maybe just making it a bit cooler because it's just way too orange right now. And if I click the before and after, you can see my body is less red and I think it definitely looks a lot much better. I think I look a bit too like pale now. So we're just gonna increase the saturation just ever so slightly. And just increase the contrast on the overall shot. And sharpen, you can just put it to 15 or 20. And Not bad, that is the color grade guys. I really hope you enjoyed that. Um, let me know any kind of questions you had about that in the comments below, but super easy. Just using masks, um, the little LUT as a base and just playing around with what Premiere Pro has to offer. Um, you can get a lot more technical, but I think you don't want to just overdo it on clips that really don't need it. I just had to bring out the shadows a bit more and the sky just needs to get that kind of texture and color back. So overall, I'm really happy how that looks. So going back to the importance of having a good monitor, I've been really enjoying the ViewSonic uh, monitor right now. The color accuracy, like I said, is crucial. One, it saves you time when you're editing. You don't want to be stressing over about color. colors are not looking right if you go over to your phone and they look completely different to your laptop or your monitor. It's just very stressful as a filmmaker. So you need to be making sure your monitor is properly calibrated. And also myself, I use a MacBook Pro, so this matches up perfectly. It's the perfect partner really for the MacBook Pro. Um, it seamlessly plugs in with a USB-C cable and it charges the Mac as well, which is really awesome. And to be honest guys, I'm all about having a slick desk setup. So it looks pretty good with the backlight behind it. And overall, it's very sleek and minimalistic. And I love to have my desk just clear and um, just kind of making it look good, you know? So it's really important to kind of keep those things in mind when choosing a monitor. Overall guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. We went over some tips and tricks on the film 
and how I color graded some shots in there. And also check out the ViewSonic monitors in the description. There's a link you can check out. And I guess on that note, guys, I will see you in the next one. Peace. What incredible insights shared by these professional creators. I hope you all learned a lot from them and also got to know a little bit more about our new products. Now, it's time to showcase the films co-created by you, Just K, Sam Newton, and Mike Vigils. They've selected some of their favorite clips from among all of the amazing submissions you shared and have edited them all together to make a final film talking about taking a leap of faith, shattering expectations, and what is perfection. As this is the moment we've all been waiting for, without further ado, let's check them out. Whether I like it or not, uh, I'm going to be pained by the people that don't like it, and I'm going to be uh, bolstered by people who do like it. Um, what it won't do is change the way that I work, which is probably the most important thing. Nice. Always Come remember nice. that the reason that you initially started working was that there was something inside yourself. That if you could manifest it in some way, you would understand more about yourself. How you coexist with the rest of society. I think it's terribly dangerous for an artist to fulfill other people's expectations. I think they produce, they generally produce their worst work when they do that. So that's the video that I've put together from all of your submissions. In total, there were 182 submissions, so obviously I wasn't able to use all of them. However, the shots that you see in this video are from around 10 different submissions that I've used and have stood out to me the most. First up here, we have a submission from Barnabas. What I really liked about this video is the color grading. And apart from that, the shakiness in this footage makes it feel really real. The storyline is very great as well, so definitely check this one out on YouTube. Secondly, this video from Joe is absolutely amazing. It's very artistic and the words are really great as well. When watching this video, I don't really know what's happening next, as the shots are very unique and done in many different places. Everything is combined perfectly, and I definitely suggest you to check this video out. Great job, Joe. This was really inspiring work. Then we have this video from Musty that has phenomenal color grading to say the least. It has an amazing storyline where he talks about his leap of faith. What then stood out to me the most is how he creatively used shots to tell his story. It's very well done in every aspect, so definitely check this one out. Another submission that I absolutely loved is this one called First Step from Lucas Push. I really liked how he used the wide opening shot at first and then later told his story through close-ups. The acting is really well done as well and it amplifies his story. And then the color grading is really great and it actually looks like a movie. He also shot most of the scenes in 24 frames per second and he let each shot go on for quite a long time. I think this was a good choice and tells the story much better. So really well done Lucas and you should definitely check this one out. Then lastly, there's the video of the winner of the contest, which we chose out of my favorite final three submissions. Everything about this video I absolutely loved, from the color grading to the storyline to all the shots he used, and especially the way he captured different cultures. I think this video has a really great energy and it absolutely makes me want to take my leap of faith and travel the world. So a really great job, Alan, and definitely check this video out. If your submission didn't make it to the final edit, I'm very sorry about that, but I still really want to thank you for participating. I can assure you however that I really enjoyed your video as I watched all of them, however there were just too many to feature each of them. So I hope you enjoyed this little edit that I put together from the final submissions, and please check them out as they put a lot of effort in them. Thanks for watching.
Over the last couple months, we ran a short film competition. The categories were Shattering Expectations, What is Perfection, and Take a Leap of Faith. The following film was created from a collection of the best entries. Bless me now with your fears, dears, I pray. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage, rage against the dying of the light. I think now more than ever, the world needs you. It needs your perspective, needs your voice, needs your light. Free from the algorithms, free from the expectations, free from their definition of perfection. And although the world can be dark, it still needs you. The canvas is blank, waiting for your brush. A brush that could be the spark to a wildfire that outshines even the darkest of times. They might call it dramatic, but I'd argue the world needs more theater. They might call it a dream, but I'd argue the world needs more dreamers. So pick up the brush and paint a fire that lights up even the darkest of nights. And rage. Rage against the dying of the light. Dears, I pray, do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. What is perfection? For me, it's those moments where you look around and feel grateful just to be in the moment. No retakes, no touch-ups, just moments of pure joy, laughter, and everything after. Where scenery has to be seen to be believed. But memories are the core of our documentaries. These smiles mean more than what social media asks for. They run deeper through our hearts to our core. With the ViewSonic Color Pro Film Festival, I ask what perfection means to you. And this is what you came up with.
So what's holding you back? Is it your strive for perfection? The need for your feed to be in coordination? Because scenery is beautiful, but our memories made together are what will stick around with us forever. So take that leap of faith, shatter expectations, make your own definition. Because your narrative is written by you. Thank you all for joining us for our premiere night. We hope you've gained some insights from the workshops and have enjoyed the incredible stories that were shared. Thank you to our amazing creative partners, to everyone who submitted a video, and to all of you watching at home. We hope to see you next time.